Well, hello, and welcome back to the fourth version of the DOS machine. So, um, as the title suggests, um, it says version 4.86, which is a not really that clever hint at what we got in here. But, uh, basically we're just going to go over the specs, it's on the machine, software, performance, and that's about it. You know the routine by now. So we've brought back the old case, the uh, case from the second version. So um, the reason I went back to this case is because, well, it was the only AT-compatible case that I had, and also because of the way the power button is. It allows for a AT power supply to actually be able to be turned on. So starting at the top, we got the CD drive. I, I still don't know what speed it is. If I had to guess, maybe four or eight speed. I'm not really sure. Five and a quarter inch floppy, three and a half inch floppy, power button, our power LED, which I got working, hard drive LED, which works, and the turbo LED, which I just have set to always be on. The turbo button's not actually hooked up to anything. Uh, even though I think there is a header on the motherboard, but I think it's different than the, uh, the header for the actual turbo button. Got the reset button, some nasty goo that I should probably clean off. We got the uh, clock speed display, which does work and displays the correct clock speed of 133 megahertz. Then we have the case badge that says just says legend on it. I don't know if that was an actual brand or what, but it has a very faint picture of a crown on it. And it says legend on it, so who knows? <laughs> Uh, and we have a key lock, which is not hooked up to anything. Uh, I could hook that up to the motherboard, but I don't have the key for it, so it would be pointless anyways. So at the back here, we got power supply, spot for fan, but it's not populated. Uh, parallel port, 9-pin serial port. AT keyboard connector, VGA out, a Ethernet card. Uh, I'll be explaining that in a little bit. And got a, our sound card here. All right, so taking a look inside, we got our uh, quality period correct cable management, being that it is non-existent cable management. And I just noticed this cable in here is loose. Let me fix that. That is the power button wire. So uh, glad I fixed that. I mean, it still worked, but I'd like to have it secured in there. So. Power supply, um, we got, uh, I think I showed this in a video before, it's like a 250 watt power supply from Delta, pretty respectable OEM brand power supply, um, it's got like 165 watts on the 5 volt rail, which we're not coming anywhere close to on this system, so it's more than capable of running the system. Coming back down here, we still got Got all of our IDE cables, floppy cables, um, ATX to AT power supply adapter, which is right here. That's what that is. Um, we have the sticky note down here that uh, just reminds me of the polarity for the uh, front panel uh, clock speed indicator because the polarity is not indicated very well. And if it falls out, which it does quite often, and I don't remember which way it goes in, uh, I don't want to accidentally fry something. So <laughs> we got a 30 gigabyte Mac store hard drive. Again, I think I've featured it in a video before. We can only use eight gigs of it split up into multiple partitions because of the way of uh, uh, DOS 622 works. Could have used DOS 7 for FAT32 support, but in my opinion, that's not true DOS. I mean, it is DOS, but it it's the Windows 95 and 98 version of DOS, so it's not really accurate. <laughs> so then, <clears throat> so as the title suggests, under there we have a 486, but it's not a normal 486. It's an AMD 5X86 P75 running at 133 megahertz. So uh, basically you're thinking, well, it says 5X86. How is that a 486? Well, let's be honest here. AMD kind of had some deceptive marketing with this CPU. They're basically, they wanted it to sell better, and 
mainly the CPU was targeted towards uh, people who already had a 486 computer and they wanted an easy drop-in replacement for their old like like original DX or DX2 or even a DX4 I guess um, that's basically what it is it's just a normal 486 running at 133 megahertz and I believe it has double the L1 cache so I think that brings it up to 16k of L1 cache as opposed to 8k on a normal 486 um, so yeah, they just, they put 5x86 and P75 in there to kind of make it seem like, oh, it's, oh, maybe it's a Pentium. Maybe it's based on Pentium architecture. You know, that, that P75, I mean, they're, they're, you're not hiding, you're not hiding anything from us, AMD. We know you're trying to say it's equivalent to a Pentium 75, which it is in some cases. <laughs> um, it's act, it's close or sometimes even slightly more powerful than a Pentium 75 in non-floating point calculations. When it comes to floating point calculations though, the Pentium destroys this CPU because um, 486 had a very old floating point unit by that time. Pentium had a much, much better one coupled with the uh, better uh, architecture of Pentium in general. Allows like, if you have a 90 megahertz Pentium, th this thing is obsolete, the CPU is obsolete. And then you keep going up in terms of clock speed that this just becomes so irrelevant at that point but i have it in there because the 486 is special you know it's it's a 486 it's what people think of when they think of early 90s dos gaming even though the cpu came out in 1995 but you know whatever <laughs> um but there's just something special about having a 486 in your computer. A 486 used to mean something. It we it was it was a status symbol. It's like having like an i9 today, I guess, or like a rise or like a Ryzen Threadripper. <laughs> you know. But of course when this CPU came out, the Pentium was already out, but we're talking earlier 486s. We're not going to get into this argument here. I have a 486 because I wanted it. We have 16 megabytes of RAM that is uh, it's normal 72 pin. I don't believe it's EDO. I believe it's just normal DRAM. Uh, two 8 megabyte sticks in there. I could put more RAM in here, but I don't have any more RAM, and I'm just using the RAM that came with the motherboard. We have our video card, which is a, uh, I believe, a Creative Graphics Blaster. It's like one of their first video cards uh, that Creative made, I think. But it has the Cirrus Logic GL. 5464 uh, chipset on it, I believe. It, it's something 54 something. It, it It's a pretty good card, pretty fast for DOS, has some good Windows 3.1 compatibility, and all around it has some pretty good DOS compatibility. And below that, can't really see it too well, but there is a 10100 Realtek Ethernet card. Um, the reason, um, mainly why I wanted that was because um, I wanted networking so I could easily transfer files to the hard drive. And you might be asking, well, where's the compact flash card from version three of the computer? Um, and basically what happened with that was um, I tried using it on here. I tried everything I could think of, but after it would read from the reader right to the hard disk for like a little while, the computer would just lock up. And I would have to hard power the system off and then power it back on before it would even detect the compact flash card again. So the IDE controller on here just hates that compact flash card. I did have another compact flash card that I tried and it worked perfectly fine, but the only problem was that it was only 64 megabytes, which is nowhere near big enough for this era of a DOS machine. It'd be fine if it was like a 286 or like an 8088 DOS machine, but not not nowhere near enough for uh, this late of a DOS machine. And then finally we got our sound card, which is not the same Sound Blaster 16 plug and play that we had in there before. This is a, uh, I believe it's made by BTC, the actual board is, but the chip is an ESS 1868F, uh, a basically OPL3 clone chip. It's a very good clone, it's actually surprisingly accurate it's probably the most accurate 
OPL uh, emulation chip there is. I would say, my opinion, it's slightly more accurate than DOSBox's OPL3 emulation. Of course, that's down to personal opinion, but I think it sounds pretty good. It sounds, in my opinion, it definitely sounds better than the old SV16 plug-and-play that I had because that was a very cut-down version of the uh, Sound Blaster 16, and it was more closer to like a Vibra 16, which is pretty notorious for not having that great of OPL3 support. Or, well, not OPL3 support, but just poor OPL3 sound. Point is, it sounds good. I like it. And you might actually notice down here, there is... Well, I have one VLB or Visa Local Bus compatible slot. Um, you would normally use VLB for, like, video cards or storage controllers. But since this board has PCI and I didn't have any VLB cards... It's pointless for me to use VLB um, when I have PCI right there, and I have a PCI video card, so I'm using PCI. Some people might argue, for a true 486, you got to have VLB, but it's like, it's got PCI, what's the point even? Um, so yeah, I don't really care about VLB that much, um, especially if I have PCI, so who cares? And then I do have a little PC speaker beeper there. Um, the actual PC speaker that used to go on this computer is broken. Um, I need to get a proper speaker to put in there, but it works. It just doesn't sound as cool. So that's basically the inside of the system. Uh, I kind of rambled a lot, so hopefully I'll cut that down some. And then we'll go into the software and show off some performance benchmarks and uh, just DOS and Windows in general. So yeah, let's get to that. All right, we're gonna go ahead and turn on the computer here. Probably just the camera a little bit, so it's not it's quite as crooked. Well, it's still gonna be crooked, I guess. And that's the wrong input. <laughs> there we go, now it's on VGA. Um, if you are wondering, this does have like the window, the cool Windows 3.1 style BIOS. In fact, let me show you that here, let's, let me show you that, because it, it's it's pretty cool that this had this kind of BIOS in like 1994, or 90, I guess 1996, but look at this. It's a GUI-based BIOS with mouse support. I mean, it's like almost UEFI, but it's not. It's a traditional BIOS, which I just think is the coolest thing. Uh, it, it's just so cool that that that's in a BIOS from this time. Right, so, got oh yeah, we also have two fifty six k of level two cache. Forgot to uh, forgot to mention that, so that'll help out with performance a little bit. All right, so there we go. We got our we got DOS loaded. So the way the partitions work is it's the same as it was before. We got our main drive, which houses our DOS, Windows programs, DOS, and Windows itself. We got um, the D drive, which is our uh, games drive. We got the E drive, which is our media drive. And then we got um, the F uh, I guess partition. They're not drives. They're partitions of... This is just for random files and other stuff. So, uh, I guess let's take a look at... No, we're going to start off with Windows first, because, honestly, Windows is not that interesting this time around. So, uh, I just realized I have the volume very low on the speakers. So, this is Windows for Workgroups 3.11. You didn't get to see it because, uh, the, uh... Uh, the monitor didn't resync fast enough, but yeah, this is Windows for Workgroups 3.11. Uh, we are running at a 1024 by 768 resolution. Um, the reason I went with this was because of that Ethernet card. I wanted to get networking to work in Windows 3.11, uh, Windows for Workgroups, but I couldn't get it to work. It 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 detected the card and it worked with the drivers but for whatever reason the actual network like protocol drivers 
wouldn't install for some reason. I I don't know why, but I tried a lot of stuff and I just I could not get it to work. So unfortunately, uh, networking does not work in Windows 3.11. So you might be wondering why do you still have the Ethernet card in there? Well, um, yeah, we just have like WinZip and Netscape in here, but no, not real point talking about that. But I have the networking card in there still. It's four. Um, the sound is still low. I should turn that up. All right. It's because I have networking working in DOS. So I run my little pack driver batch file, which loads the Ethernet driver itself. And then, uh, then what I do is I can is I can go into this little little uh, utility program called MTCP, which is a nice simple TCP over IP stack for DOS, and also has a built-in FTP server. I'm gonna go ahead and run my little TCP batch file, which sets up DHCP and everything, and then. Um, so I have the IP address set to 192.168.1.12, and that is a fixed IP address. That way I can always go and I know what the FTP server is located at. So now if I wanted to, I could go into a TCP uh, program on a modern computer, and I could t uh, FTP files back and forth from a modern computer to the DOS machine because I don't have the compact flash card anymore, this makes it way easier to copy files. And I wish I had tried this like way back in like DOS machine version one. Um, but this makes it way easier. It's not the fastest. It's like 500 kilobytes a second on average, but that's, n but just that's way more convenient than trying to stick stuff onto floppies or burning a CD or like hooking up like my super disc drive or, um, taking out the hard drive manually copying the files over it's way easier and once you get once you go through the hassle of setting it up it's it is oh it's it's great it is so good um i'll put a link in the description to a phil's computer lab video maybe up in a card at the top on how you can set this up yourself it's worth the hassle if you don't have a compact flash card or an sd card or something easier to copy files to so i do have uh Something on here I did not show before. You might know what that is. That is AdLib Tracker 2. Um, so I'm actually going to go ahead and play. I'm not going to load AdLib Tracker itself. I'm just going to load the play program, which will play uh, tracker uh, AdLib Tracker files. So we get so you get to hear that nice ESS uh, sound chip, even though you won't get a very good recording of it because it's going through my camera's microphone. Is it going to work? Oh, it doesn't work. Oh, I spelled the file wrong. Oh, it, it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, uh, let's try a different file. Mm, if I remember, if I remember these file names correctly, Okay, hold on. I'm I'm gonna come back once I figure out these file names. <laughs> Why? All right, it's on screen now. I cannot mess it up, mess up the spelling now. All right, it's correct. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna be very upset. It's not gonna work. Come on. All right, let's try. Let's try no graphics mode. <laughs> That also didn't work. Oh, come on, dude. Alright, we're gonna load AdLib Tracker itself. <laughs> Apparently, the play program doesn't wanna work. Three. Oh, okay. That's, uh, that, that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> okay, maybe I need to, uh. I've had problems with AdLib Tracker before. Um, okay, it gave me a page fault. This has happened before. Um, 
Now, normally it would do that if I didn't load the packet driver for some reason, and it also would do, it would also crash with Quake in Phil's DOS benchmark pack if I didn't load the packet driver, but I had the packet driver loaded. <laughs> so maybe I need to have the packet driver loaded, but not uh, DHCP or whatever. So we're going to try that again. Maybe it was just... It was just the combination of stuff I had been doing on the computer before. As you know, DOS is weird like that. I've had this working before, so I know it's possible to get it working. ADD to play slash graphics uh, slash modules. Maybe I don't need the slash before. Maybe that was the problem. Modules slash wheelchair.dfm. There we go. So we have a very crunchy uh, AdLib Tracker file here for you. I like this track. So, got a sample of how OPL3 sounds on this. Um, as you can see, it worked now. So, apparently I got a, I can only have the packet driver loaded, but I cannot have T, uh, DHCP and stuff loaded. But it needs the packet driver to be loaded, because it won't work without it. It's so weird. I don't know why that is. If anyone has any thoughts on why that is, let me know. Maybe it's something to do with resources, because if it doesn't have the packet driver loaded system just freaks out but everything else works why why is this like this why can nothing why can nothing be perfect on any of my computers oh wait because they're computers <laughs> so let's go ahead and show you off show you off show you some benchmarks uh let's run 3d bench 1.0 c so it's not going to be a uh, a powerhouse in terms of performance like uh the previous machines were because those were uh uh, like K62 based or Pentium 230 or Pentium 233, so it's not going to be as good in terms of performance, but it's more accurate performance. So this is PC Player benchmark at 320 by 200. So it might look kind of decent on camera, um, but that might be just the way it's capturing it. Um, in real life, it is fairly choppy, and you'll see the frame rate here. Yeah, 19, wow, that's higher than, <laughs> that's actually a higher frame rate than normal. Normally, it's like 18, so, woohoo, <laughs> got a lucky run. So, uh, I'd run the Doom test, but I can just show you Doom anyways, um, and it takes a while to run the benchmark, so let's go ahead and run Quake. Or at least a quick time demo. So it, if you shrink the screen down a few times, it is kind of playable. But I'm gonna be honest. I'm probably not gonna be playing Quake on this computer a whole lot. Um, I don't even have Quake. I don't even have the full game. But whenever I do, I'm probably gonna run it on. Uh, maybe I'll make a Windows 95 era system. And either just use GL Quake or use like Win Quake or just run Do Quake in DOS mode or something with a better CPU. Because this, especially right now in the full screen mode, uh, it's not really very playable. It's like 10 FPS. I think I think it, the benchmark comes out to like 12. It's not very impressive. But uh, you shrink it down a few sizes, and it, it is it is kind of playable. 
And this is what a lot of people would have had to deal with in terms of performance. And, uh, benchmark's almost over here. And now it's over. We got 13.6 FPS, so yeah. I'm not going to run the test again with the shrink, the screen shrunken down, because it'll take like another minute, and I don't feel like doing that. Um, and then I don't feel like running the other benchmarks, because I don't want this video to take forever. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and go run Doom here. Now the volume is too loud. There we go. So Doom runs just fine. Uh, I mean, Doom runs basically perfectly on a DX4. So of course it's going to run fine on a 133 megahertz 486. But yeah, Doom. Doom's performance is just fine and dandy, as one would expect from this speed of CPU. There. There's my speed running skills. Pretty bad. <laughs> now one game. Now I've showed you other games in here before. I kind of felt like I had to show Doom. But, I do have a certain other game now, on here. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. Apparently, I had it set to 320 by 200 VESA mode, which doesn't work. It works in 640 by 480 VESA mode. But, um, for whatever reason, the VESA driver I have for this will only allow you to use 640 by 480 or above, for some reason. So you have to run it in non-VESA mode. But yeah. Yeah. The music slows down kind of whenever it's loading from the hard drive. But... Yeah, this is, this is normal 320 by 200 high graphic details. So, it's not a perfect frame rate in full screen, but it's definitely playable in my opinion. Uh, you might be able to see it a little bit better once I get down here. So, you kind of look at this, and it's... It's what I would describe as playable, but you shrink it down some and you can see it's a lot smoother. But I think it's still perfectly playable in full screen mode. Let's see if I can make the jump. I like I can never make this jump right. It takes me like 20 tries. <laughs> I think my space bar kind of sucks. I think that's why. But yeah. So like the game runs in my opinion, just fine. Full screen mode. At 640 by 480, it, it, it suffers a lot. It It's still kind of playable in 640 by 480, but it's definitely not uh, the greatest. And you have to shrink the screen down, and then that kind of defeats the whole point of running at a higher resolution to begin with. So, yeah. So, yeah, it works... Yeah, so it, it's good enough for me. So yeah. So this is ba that's basically it for the dot for DOS machine 4.86. Uh, I don't really have anything else to show on here. It's pretty standard DOS. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll try to make more videos more frequently, hopefully. Um, also, we have a Discord server. I don't know if I actually said this in a video ever. It's kind of dead. <laughs> Uh, so, if you want, you can come join it. Link's in the description. Um, and, yeah. So, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye.